Joe Kadar received a um, bachelor, a master of engineering and PhD degrees from Kyoto University, um, Kyoto, Japan in 1998, 2000, and 2003, respectively. He joined Tokyo Institute of Technology in 2003, and he's now a um, professor. Um, he has authored and co-authored more than um, 400 journals and conference um, papers. His research interests include the uh, millimeter wave wireless transceivers, digital PLL, ultra low um, power IF circuits. Um, he has been um, worked as TPC member of ICC and VRSI, as well as the ESSEC, and also the guest editors and associate editor of JSSC. So. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for uh, staying here for this late time. Okay, uh, in this presentation, uh, I will talk about some uh, circuit technique for realize uh, low power uh, digital PLL, especially for fractional end operation. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a kind of summary of architectures. Uh, I'm just uh, ex uh, comparing with uh, conventional analog and digital and something, something. And uh, firstly, I will talk about uh, some summary uh, about final target architecture. Uh, actually, final target architecture or realizing the ultra low power digital PLL is uh, it should be digital. And also, I will talk about integer n, but the integer n PLL is now no 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 very uh, meaningful to competing the FOM. And uh, ring oscillator and LC usually LC oscillator become uh, power uh, efficient. Uh, also, I will talk about this issue later. And sub sampling and sub uh, sampling and sub sampling choice is also important for lowering the power consumption. I, I will also uh, talk about this one later. You know the DTC based uh, architecture is also very good for low power. Design. Okay, uh, in this presentation, I will talk about this issue, and then uh, later I will also talk about some uh, design example uh, realizing the less than one milliwatt uh, power consumption. Okay, uh, let's study from the integer operation. And uh, what I want to say here is uh, integer and PLL is no already uh, in terms of FOM, we can realize very high performance. So I think we have no need to purchasing the improving the FOM for integer and PLL. For example, one of the uh, one of the very promising architecture for integer operation is injection lock PLL. Basically, inter injection lock PLL have no uh, charge pump and no TDC, so the, there is nothing to disturb the inbound phase noise. The phase noise of, in, uh, oh, okay, uh, okay, for example, this is the free running uh, phase noise of this show. And uh, in case of injection lock PLL, uh, inbound phase noise is simply determined by this uh, phase noise of free running this show, phase noise. And this just uh, first order folded here, and this uh, plot become directly coming from this side. Uh, this is fa simple uh, fast order hyper filter uh, at the uh, signal transport function like this. And uh, you know, uh, f the reference noise is 20 uh, log n uh, increased, but still, usually it is much lower than the uh, inbound phase noise determined by the free running uh, phase noise. So the one uh, good text, uh, good feature of this injection locked PLL is that we have no need to no no need to spend power consumption for improving the inbound phase noise. For example, uh, it's a little bit complicated, but the main the just uh, explaining about the, the uh, phase noise and the FOM for injection lock and the type two PLL. Just uh, it. It's general type two, like the charge pump based and the TDC based, and both it become like this. For example, in case of injection log, as I explained, uh, uh, in the phase noise is simply determined by visual phase noise, and uh, in this case, uh, loop bandwidth is uh, can be calculated by this equation, and it becomes 0 0.4, 40 percent of reference frequency. It's much wider as compared with the type two PLL. In case of type two PLL, usually 10 percent or 5 percent loop bandwidth will be used. But in case of injection lock, the loop bandwidth can be very wide as compared with other uh, PLL architectures. So uh, uh, using this equation. FOM of injection locked PLL can be calculated like this. And in this case, I assume the uh, V 
power consumption of PLL, total power consumption just uh, determined by VCO. So we can we can obtain this uh, re equation. So this equation suggests PLL4M is be simply determined by VCO FOM and the reference frequency. That means that if we uh, want to improve the PLL 4M, just improve P VCO FOM and use the higher reference frequency. So uh, in this case, the, it actually very simple, but the, in case of injection locked PLL, almost this equation can be realized even by simple design because there is no uh, charge pump, uh, no TDG, uh, easily FOM can be improved like this. On the other hand, in case of type 2 PLL, uh, the, uh, the FOM can be calculated by the same way, but in this case, the even uh, uh, neglect uh, uh, invariant phase noise coming from the charge pump and TDC. Just simply uh, consider VCO phase noise, and the invariant phase noise is also uh, I assume the invariant phase noise is also coming from the VCO. Even such kind of very ideal case, uh, maximum achievable uh, FOM or type 2 PL will become like this. It's uh, roughly 7 dB worth, even uh, neglecting the uh, charge pump noise. Okay, uh, this is one example. Uh, in this case, I assume uh, ring oscillator, FOM is minus 153 dBc per health, it is not very good. And the power consumption in this case 0 0.5 milliwatt is assumed and oscillation frequency and reference frequency like this. In this case, if we apply uh, injection lock PLL, uh, the loop bandwidth becomes 40 MHz, 40% 40 of reference frequency. And the integrated phase noise become two, uh, zeta become 2.0 picosecond in this case, even using the very low power and low power uh, uh, ring oscillator. On the other hand, uh, in case of uh, type 2 PLL, and this is again the inbound phase noise is simply determined by the VCO and the power consumption or power consumption, the zeta and in, in, uh, inbound phase noise uh, degradation coming from which, uh, the, the charge pump and the TDC is uh, not considered, but still uh, uh, integrated data become 6.3 picosecond and FOM become 10 uh, dB worth as compared with the injection lock. So uh, I, I mean uh, injection type 2 uh, is very common, but the, the already injection lock can be worked very robustly, uh, supporting by some uh, backup FRO and something. So the, we have, the, the, okay, okay, I, I will show some result. Actually, this is the latest reported uh, FOM, uh, just presented in this year's VSI circuit. And uh, the usual, this, this including the every publication in SSCS conference in the recent ISSC or something, everything, and the border of P, the, the maximum performance of FOM or integer N PLL is around minus 255 or something. But already we could realize minus 271.4 dB FOM performance using the injection lock architecture. So maybe one common uh, disadvantage or disadvantage of the injection lock PLL is reference bar. And already minus 66.5 dB reference bar could be realized. Okay, th th this one realized minus 271.4 dB. Just applying the in injection lock with a uh, very low power uh, good FOM visual design. So what I want to say, uh, say here is the, uh, not uh, the prouding this uh, performance, but uh, I think that now, presently you have no need to purchasing the FOM of integer and PLL. It's almost no meaning that we can already realize a very good uh, FOM performance by applying injection load. Okay. So the next topic is about uh, VCO and DCO. And the, okay, uh, this uh, equation, maybe you know the VCO and the Ringo Schrader, if we, uh, that both uh, phase noise can be calculated by like this. Uh, this case, the I assume class C VCO. And in this case, the M stage, M stage uh, Ringo Schrader. In this case, the FOM, uh, if we assume that this uh, condition, if all uh, phase noise becomes 30 dB better if we spend the same power consumption. 
So usually for low power uh, PLL design, VCO design, uh, even sometimes VCO can be ring oscillator uh, can work very low power, like 10 microwatt, 50 microwatt, something. But uh, uh, usually phase noise is not very good. If we uh, want to realize very good uh, the, the, the PLL FOM, in that case, the, we have to use the, uh, the LC oscillator. Uh, still, this uh, out of band phase noise becomes uh, dominant for, for PLL performance. So, yeah, usually, ring oscillator, uh, LC oscillator is better for the whole uh, PLL for M improvement. Okay, uh, next one is, uh, okay, uh, also, uh, maybe you know, uh, simply, uh, this uh, plot explaining about uh, visual FOM like this, and uh, it can be uh, recalculated like this in case of the crash visual. So simply, uh, the maximum achievable FOM is determined by quality factor of the the LC resonator. So you know, almost uh, for a long time time, the F visual FOM is saturated around minus. 195 dB. It's simply determined by the, the quality factor. Sometimes this uh, performance can be extended by using some uh, like uh, high Q, high Q, uh, the external inductor or something. But still, if we uh, use the on chip inductor, simple on chip inductor, it becomes min around minus 195. Maybe recent uh, VCO paper, actually, tomorrow we also have a VCO session achieving the very good uh, the Africa noise corner but still already one, one ki less than one kilohertz has been reported so maybe VCO is uh, seeing normal room for improvement okay so okay uh, this is almost kind of uh, uh, summary or how to realize the low power uh, the fractional and digital PLL okay as I mentioned uh, the DTC is much. Uh, DTC can be uh, uh, offers a very uh, the big chance for low power uh, fraction and PLL design. Usually, this uh, DTC and the TDC relation is very similar for to the like ADC and D, uh, DAC. Usually, ADC requires a much higher power consumption as compared with uh, uh, the, the ADC. So, in this uh, case, also. Uh, maintaining very wide uh, bandwidth like 10 bit or 12 bit or something for both DTC and TDC. Uh, usually DTC can be several times smaller power consumption is required. So the, it is not a good idea just covered by uh, uh, T, uh, TDC. Oh, oh, sorry, it doesn't work. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, it, uh, usually it is a very good idea to use the uh, uh, DTC to assist the uh, uh, TDC operation. In that case, uh, we can use narrow range TDC. Uh, uh, and on the other hand, DTC have to cover the uh, whole, whole range of DTC DC cycle, but still power consumption is much lower. For example, this is an example of the DC or TDC and the DTC power consumption. According to our recent result, uh, DC or power consumption can be around less than 100 microwatt, and also TDC and DTC. Actually, in this case, the DTC covers the whole full range of DT DC or cycle. Like uh, in this case, we use 10 bit. On the other hand, D in this uh, case, the TDC is just 4 bit, but power consumption is almost the same, uh, even with uh, almost the same resolution. On the other hand, one of the most uh, biggest part of the uh, power consumption here is much modulus divider. Actually, uh, still uh, MMD work at the uh, like uh, DC frequency, like 2.4 gigahertz or something. It have to work at a very high frequency. So even it doesn't con uh, contribute the uh, jitter performance. It consumes very power consumption, like the uh, 200 microwatt or something. Okay. Uh, one of the, uh, I think, one of the uh, ideas, just reducing the power consumption of much modulus divider is the, using the subsampling operation. You know, uh, subsampling is uh, many times uh, utilized for lowering the inbound phase noise, but I think it is not a good idea. That it should be used for low, uh, lowering the uh, power consumption. Uh, 
Uh, in this case, okay, uh, please look at the, uh, uh, okay, uh, please, please ch change the battery if you have. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, uh, in this case, the, I, but data point can't work. Okay, uh, one, 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 three, please back one slide. <laughs> okay, back, back one slide. Oh, Ow, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, uh, basically, it's, I, I think some sampling and some sampling operation is almost offering the same transfer function as I know. Uh, okay, left one is sampling PLL. Just using the multi modulus divider. This is very common type of uh, uh, the PLL. And in this case, the reference signal is uh, modulated by DTC. And the reference prime and the feedback signal is used for uh, input signal for DTC. In this case, the both uh, reference and the feedback signal almost have a very uh, correlated and small, uh, always have a very small uh, difference. Ah, okay. mm. Mm. And in this case, and uh, if we apply delay uh, before the sampler, the in this case, rising edge here, as you can see, the it almost uh, equivalent for that the aligned for the different signal. So if we put some delay, oh, okay. uh, like this, in this case, the uh, much modulus divider can be removed. On the other hand, uh, uh, after the retiming by uh, flip pro, that we can realize almost the same rising edge here. I mean, this part, rising, this rising is just used for uh, TDC operation. In this case, the, uh, the we don't need much modulus divider anymore here. This contributes the very large uh, power reduction uh, in this case, minus 120 microwatt can be reduced. Okay. On the other hand, if uh, further introducing the uh, masking using the different signal here, so we can also obtain the this feedback signal. That is almost e equivalent. This signal in this signal can be completely same, even uh, without much modulus divider. So. So for rolling the power, especially for uh, after uh, settling, the always this uh, reference signal and this feedback signal difference is very very small. In that case, that we have no need uh, this much modular divider, and simply uh, retiming and the masking can realize the completely same uh, signal for the input signal for the DTC. So I mean, I mean, transfer function. Actually, this case and this case, the transfer function is completely the same. Uh, I think the original uh, subsampling paper have some mistake for understanding the uh, the transfer function here. The usually the PFD and TDC work in the time domain, but uh, sometimes we use uh, phase value. For the, 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 the making a transfer function. In this case, the, we have to uh, remember phase have to be normalized for operating frequency. For example, uh, if uh, uh, okay, okay. For example, uh, time difference in one picosecond or visual time uh, period becomes uh, uh, 0 0.864 degree at 2.4 gigahertz. On the other hand, it becomes 0 0.0036 degree at 10 megahertz at the reference domain. So I mean, the, even without the frequency divider, if we, it is compared with the 10, mega, 10 megahertz signal, in that case, the phase have to be normalized even without the frequency divider. So still, this uh, uh, PFD and the charge pump will be suffer from the uh, N square. So I mean, I mean, transfer function of sampling and subsampling is completely the same. Okay, uh, this is almost a summary of this presentation. Uh, please remember this uh, to realize the low power design. Uh, always, uh, usually digital implementation is better for the lower power consumption. And uh, the, now we have no need to consider integer n. Only we should, uh, as a researcher, we should focusing on the fractional n operation. And LC is better for power efficiency and power subsampling also promising for lower power consumption. 
Uh, as I explained, it is not for low noise. Uh, it is used for low power design. And uh, DTC is very powerful for reducing the DTC power consumption by reducing the required range for TDC. But still, some improvement is required. Okay, uh, after this, the I will talk about some uh, real uh, implemented result. And uh, okay, this showing the power consumption and FOM and uh, uh, okay, blue blue one is analog implementation. Black one is digital implementation. Actually, the uh, lowest digital performance and uh, very high uh, performance uh, 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 fractional PLL is implemented by analog circuit, analog architectures. Uh, almost two minus two hundred fifty has been reported like this. On the other hand, for low power side, ar around here, it's all realized by digital architectures because the charge pump and the related building block consumes uh, larger power consumption as compared with uh, TDC and the DTC operation. Okay, I, I will explain about it later. So basically, uh, the, I, I will talk about two, uh, two uh, after this, I will talk about two different architectures. Okay, firstly, I will talk about uh, this this one. It uh, presented in last last year's ISSC and the JSSC. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Still, uh, this plot explaining about uh, fa uh, the power consumption breakdown or Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, transceiver. Uh, even with a very low power design, the it already realized less than 3 milliwatt operation, but still uh, frequency synthesizer consumes a very large uh, portion of this uh, power breakdown. And in this case, that we have uh, this is a kind of wireless application. We always have to consider uh, JIT and spark characteristic, even with a very low power design. So one promising uh, 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 architecture is reported like this, and uh, as uh, the Dr. Liu already uh, explained, and uh, in this architecture, very low power uh, DTC is used to uh, narrowing the required range for DTC. This is very, very, very useful architecture. But still, the, this uh, low power, ultra low power DTC causes a very large spar. So some uh, after this uh, slide, I will talk about some uh, improved performance, imp improved way for the DTC will be explained. Okay, uh, as I explained, the DTC, TDC uh, total required range can be uh, so much reduced by applying the DTC. Only uh, DTC covers the full range, and this uh, DTC only converting uh, the uh, residue part. So the required range is very defined. Actually, uh, in this case, the uh, 10 bit DTC and the 4 bit uh, TDC is assumed. Okay, uh, in this case, the also to realizing the very fine resolution for DTC and TDC, the DTC is uh, much easier to realize a very fine resolution like this. And actually, the less than 0.2 percent iron could be realized even with a very small power consumption. I, I will explain the detail. Uh, the implementation implementation result and the target uh, in this case target uh, interface noise is minus 110 for the Bluetooth low energy uh, so just two picosecond resolution is required for the TDC okay uh, for uh, DTC uh, basically there is two different architectures one is the variable slope DTC and one another one is the constant slope. Maybe you know, the, in this case, just uh, changing, for example, changing the uh, capacity, uh, load capacity, and change uh, this slope to realize the uh, digital code to time difference like this. On the other hand, uh, constant slope type, always keep using the same uh, slope for input signal, but the, uh, changing the offset value here, initial state, and uh, in this case, the, this uh, linear conversion can realize a very linear di uh, digital to time conversion. Okay, uh, this is uh, one uh, simplified architecture of constant slope DTC. Uh, basically, uh, there is some current source and capacitor to generate uh, constant slope, and this uh, D, uh, DAC is used for pre-charging this capacitance, as I explained. 
and this uh, is sometimes implemented by just uh, the in, uh, uh, inverter and uh, uh, cutting this uh, like the, the logical threshold like 0 0.5 volt or something uh, this output becomes 0 to 1 like this this is a very simple operation but in this case the one of the problem of uh, this uh, conventional constant slope DTC is larger power consumption of uh, this uh, dark for precharging the initial state. Uh, some uh, like sometimes 40 megahertz or 50 megahertz conversion speed is required. In this case, the uh, relatively fast settling time is required even uh, for this uh, precharging uh, dark. Okay, uh, this uh, explaining about uh, okay uh, non nonlinearity. Uh, caused by precharging time difference. Okay, I, I will skip the detail, but simply, uh, even for the DTC working at the reference uh, clock frequency, there still uh, it causes some difference in the uh, the settled value because of the very short uh, settling time. Okay. Also, one another issue is the uh, related to this uh, comparator. The uh, inverter-based comparator is, uh, suffer from the supply noise. It causes the uh, directly penetrate to uh, digital to uh, time conversion. So it is one more issue. Okay, so I will uh, talk about some uh, new architecture called as uh, uh, isolated constant slope DTC. This is a conventional architecture. Uh, this is a new one. Uh, one difference is uh, put a series resistance here and insert two different switch here and here. In this case, the, uh, this constant slope generation is always start from zero volt to the VDD. On the other hand, in this case, the starting point is uh, different depending on the precharged value. So in this case, the, this uh, constant slope generation part is, can keep uh, the always same operation, same voltage condition can be realized. And the precharging voltage is stored here. So it causes the, uh, the two, two advantage. So linearity improvement by uh, ideal constant slope generation. One more thing is uh, uh, low power consumption of precharging. OK, uh, by applying the new architecture, actually a precharging dark requires larger power consumption to charging the very large uh, load capacitance for constant slope generation. On the other hand, uh, actually, uh, according to simulated result, this uh, precharging dark have uh, less contribution for the total digital characteristic. But still, for fast uh, settling time, very large power consumption is required. But to applying the new architecture, uh, inserting the series capacitance, the power consumption can be drastically reduced. So mainly, jitta uh, is coming from the current source and the uh, constant slope generator. And this part cannot be reduced, but still remaining part uh, redundant. This, especially for precharging dark, can be reduced by applying the inserting series capacitance like this. Okay, so the thought that the detail circuit schematic is like this. Uh, there is switch here and here, and also uh, the odd zero switch is also inserted like this. Okay. Uh, operation is not very difficult, just uh, switch is turn on, on, turn off, and uh, uh, precharging voltage is stored here. And uh, this node is uh, 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 set at the logical threshold of this inverter. This is very, uh, actually, this is very common operation for like data converter design, but not uh, the far, so far uh, applied for uh, this TDC design. Okay, uh, th this can be good for uh, reducing the supply sensitivity. And the first three pre-charge here, and then the open here, open here, and switch in, and reset the disk capacity, and then start the pre-charging here. Actually, this uh, node A is always uh, going like this. It is always constant, just this blue line becomes uh, different depending on the pre-charge value. So this part is always keep constant, can keep the uh, constant operation. So this is measurement result of standard on uh, the DTC. And linearity can be very good, plus minus 0 0.8 picosecond could be realized even with the 0 0.15 very low power 
consumption. This is a comparison. Actually, past uh, design requires 1.8 or 2.2 milliwatt or something. It is almost impossible to realize uh, less than one mil total one milliwatt PLL using that this very power consum consuming DTC. Actually, this one is lowest power consumption, but the uh, uh, resolution is uh, 10 times larger. Uh, Full range is much narrower, and the uh, INL is also not very good. So, yeah, this kind of uh, DTC improvement is very important and one of the key points for low power fraction and PLL. Okay, uh, next, uh, I'd like to explain about the whole architecture. As I explained, uh, constant isolated constant slope DTC is placed here, and uh, actually, power consumption was uh, including. Uh, DTC and TDC is just 282 microwatt at uh, 52 megahertz uh, reference clock. And uh, in this case, uh, yeah, in many cases, second order DSM is applied, but the second order case, uh, wide uh, the range is required for this DTC. But it is not a very good idea for lowering the power consumption. So in this case, the first order DSM is applied. In this case, the Required range for this DTC can be reduced. Actually, this is much better for invariant phase noise degradation. Uh, the, if we apply uh, second order DSM here, the required range becomes wider and the quantization noise becomes higher. Actually, there is some uh, border, especially at the lower power consumption, uh, relation becomes uh, changed. At actually, uh, for high power and low jitter design, in that case, second order is better. But uh, the relation becomes opposite at lower power consumption, uh, fast order becomes better. So detail is explained in the journal paper in this uh, work. Okay. And also, gain calibration is always required like this. And uh, for narrow range DDC, uh, TDC, in this case, 4 bit uh, time amplifier based D TDC is utilized. Less than 2 picosecond resolution can be realized with a very low power consumption. Actually, there is a lot of choice for DTC, but the time amplifier can be one of the uh, good candidates for lower power and high resolution uh, TTC architectures. And uh, uh, for this, you have some data, and this is just coming from the uh, Manage modulus divider. Also, this is one of the most important points here is uh, this is uh, narrow range TDC. So it is not very robust for uh, disturbance, also not good for uh, faster settling. So the, this uh, coarse PLL, actually this uh, implemented by coarse TDC, uh, supporting the fast uh, settling and robust operation. Okay, uh, this is inside of the coarse TDC. This is counter-based to TDC, so very uh, what the infinity range can be realized. On the other hand, this work with the DC or clock, so very power consuming. In this case, the, if we put some dead zone here. After PFD, here is some dead zone plus minus 464 picosecond. Inside of this uh, dead zone, this counter doesn't work and doesn't consume the power. So Actually, this is always working, but the, the power consumption after the settling becomes less than 5 microwatt. So power consumption can be reduced, but the, uh, quickly uh, detecting the disturbance also works at the, uh, the, uh, the contribute for fast settling. 4.2 picosecond could be measured. Okay, uh, okay, then I will explain about the measurement result. This uh, prototype is implemented by 65 nanometer CMOS technology by TSMC. And uh, this is the measurement result using uh, the reference, the reference uh, doubler. And the external uh, reference is 26 megahertz, but the internal is uh, the doubled and the 52 megahertz reference clock is used in this case. But all total power consumption becomes 981 microwatt could be realized for and it is like this. So the, it's mainly because of that uh, very linear and low power DTC design like this. And this is without uh, reference uh, uh, Dabra, reference uh, 26 megahertz uh, external reference is directly used and power consumption can be reduced like this. 
the zit that becomes worse, because, but still lower power could be uh, like this. Okay, this is a comparison. Uh, actually, uh, this one is one of the best performance in digital PLL. And to 46.8 dB could be realized, but power consumption is still very large. This is one of the uh, very low power design, but one still 1.6 milliwatt is required. So in this design, uh, less than 1 milliwatt is uh, fastly realized, less than minus 2.4. Okay, okay, this, this, this is easier to understand. Actually, uh, the uh, Gaussian paper is around here, but less than 2 and 1 milliwatt, uh, this is fast to uh, reporting the less than minus 245 or something. This is mainly because of the, the very linear and low power DTC. Okay, so the, I explained about isolated constant to slope DTC, and maybe low power DC design and fast order operation and time amplifier, such kind of combination can be very powerful for lowering the power consumption. Okay, the uh, second part is uh, further reducing the power consumption. In this case, the, we could realize minus two. 2.265 uh, uh, microwatt could be realized by applying a subsampling operation. I, I already explained in the uh, initial part of this presentation. Actually, uh, this paper is also uh, appearing. Uh, no, no, uh, yeah, early, uh, you can access the early access for this journal version. Okay. Uh, okay. Here. Okay. Uh, actually. Further lowering the power consumption, I applied several uh, uh, techniques like the subsampling and sampling switching, and uh, there are some DC technique and some another uh, type of DDC like this. Okay, uh, I do like. To, okay, this is a uh, uh, previous one uh, presented last year's ISCCC, and in this case, as I explained, uh, the this red part is usually power consuming. Uh, okay, DCO, of course DCO uh, is working at uh, 2.4 GHz in this case. They are always power consuming like this. And actually buffer here is also power consuming. And the two additional part here, these uh, much modulus divider and sum price also very headache and uh, for lowering the power consumption. On the other hand, this uh, black part work at the uh, reference uh, frequency like 40 megahertz and 26 megahertz or something. So yeah, th this part can be work at very low power consumption. On the other hand, still this uh, FLL or coarse uh, the PLL uh, needs some power consumption. But uh, after uh, the lock, it can be turned off like this. So maybe uh, this multi modulus divided and sampler part is the next target to reducing the power consumption. Okay, as I explained, uh, okay, DCO, TDC, and the DTC have large uh, noise contribution. Even the lowering, the, it's a kind of best design, but still uh, have a large noise contribution. So it is almost impossible impossible further reducing the power consumption here. This is uh, always required to lowering the uh, zeta characteristic. On the other hand, uh, much modulus divided and sampler have uh, almost no influence on the zeta performance, but still uh, consuming very power, large power consumption like this. In this case, that we uh, apply 65 nanometer technology, so it causes some larger uh, power for digital standard cell or something. Maybe the advanced technology can lower the, this power, but still, uh, this much modulus divided consuming the large power consumption. Okay, so uh, next target is re the removing the, this much modulus divided, as I explained. Okay, uh, for example, I already explained the essence of the, this architecture. For the, Basically, theoretically, this uh, multi modulus divider is uh, redundant after settling. Uh, always, this uh, just this sampler uh, determining the this uh, comparison edge, edge timing is always determined by this DCO side, DCO edge. So, fundamentally, this multi modulus divider is not required after settling. 
So this is one example, but still, if we remove much modulus divider, it becomes uh, some uh, malfunctioning. For example, uh, this is the initial state, and after here, this is actually a simulation result, and put some uh, artificial minus one megahertz frequency jump here. And this gray part is uh, the uh, locking range for this uh, subsampling PLA operation mode. There's this uh, small one megahertz uh, disturbance can be okay even for subsampling operations. Still, after one megahertz disturbance, it can be locked like this. But if you put uh, six megahertz uh, disturbance, in this case, the, it and you fail to be locked. So never back. Uh, but just applying the subsampling operation. On the other hand, one more issue is if uh, this, uh, this plus 0.5, but the, this disturbance becomes around here. Uh, in this case, 11 megahertz. In this case, look at the long frequency. Just plus one, uh, the FCW call is one another uh, stable point. So this is a very common issue for uh, subsampling PLL without some FLL or something. So some uh, the backup technique will be required. Okay, uh, as I explained, okay, this is uh, again explained, but uh, okay, uh, look at the uh, circuit operation. Uh, basically, we need some uh, uh, input signal for this narrow range TDC. This narrow range TDC is uh, usually implemented as a 3-bit or 4-bit or something. In that case, the large dis disturbance cannot be detected by uh, this narrow range TDC. So, uh, some, uh, something required here. But to making uh, some feedback signal here without uh, MMD, uh, this feedback signal cannot be directly uh, generated. So the one delay here, small delay here, can be utilized to realize the, uh, uh, the removing the, this much modular C bar. Just uh, difference is just in the interval is one delay here. So in this case, the, this, uh, this is reference A and this reference B signal is generated like this. Reference uh, A is a little bit earlier here. And uh, this uh, reference B and the feedback signal is aligned each other. And this reference A signal can be used for masking the, this uh, clock signal like this. So finally, we can realize uh, the rising edge and the feedback signal can be uh, coming from uh, this uh, reference A signal without divider signal. So I mean, this uh, divider rising edge, this timing is replaced by reference A signal. In this case, the divider, uh, divider signal, OK. Here, divider signal, div. This signal can be replaced by this timing. So uh, much more divider can be completely removed after the settling. OK, like this. So one more thing is, the, as I explained, uh, simple subsampling operation causes the, some uh, the, the weakness for sudden disturbance. So we put um, both, uh, uh, so put, put the ma uh, mass flexor here, and changing the subsampling operation and the sampling operation can be uh, realized uh, by same loop. As I explained, transfer function is completely determined by this uh, sampler timing, and the rising edge here is determined by uh, clock signal here, coming from here. So just this reference A or uh, divider signal generated by much more divider is just uh, used for masking the uh, redundant path like this, just generating the, this signal. This signal edge is just coming from here and here. This uh, edge, rising edge, is generated by this. And this divider signal or this reference A signal is just making, uh, masking the, this redundant uh, up and down path. So they're basically in terms of rising edge here, feedback signal uh, can be completely the same for both uh, sampling mode and subsampling mode. So one more thing is the idea is just uh, starting from the uh, sampling mode for faster settling. And after locking, uh, 
this uh, PLL can be moved to subsampling mode or reducing the power consumption. But uh, still, in that case, the, if there is some dis large disturbance or something, the, it causes some malfunctioning. So there is some backup circuit here. Uh, okay, this here, this is actually the same with the uh, uh, always on course uh, PLL as I explained uh, for the, pre the later pa uh, primary part. And here, PFD and uh, there is some dead zone. Actually, dead zone, if uh, this input signal for the narrow range TTC can be, if uh, sometimes uh, outside of the, this TTC range, it can be detected by this, uh, the PFD using the dead zone. And uh, if uh, this uh, out of dead zone detector detecting the large disturbance, soon uh, this uh, enabling signal it turned on and back to the sampling mode for fast recovery. And uh, one more thing is uh, actually only uh, this is still kind of a subsampling mode. So plus one FCW case cannot be detected. So still some FLL is uh, still required here. But the uh, simple FLL work at the uh, DC frequency. So uh, it is very power consuming consuming. So in this case, the, uh, for example, in this case, uh, uh, five, uh, this difference is 500 microwatt is required for this PLL, uh, FLL operation, but uh, we apply some duty cycling, uh, working at a very limited time, because this is just for backupping, so the usually disturbance can be detected by uh, this uh, coarse uh, uh, TDC. But, uh, you know, company people usually uh, asking the 100 perfect operation. So actually this is the very rare incident, but uh, uh, still every uh, the disturbance can be detected to this part or this part. So the, using the two different type of detecting the out and disturbance, so it was 100% perfect operation. Uh, this is the additional part. Actually, uh, this already explained. This work as a uh, uh, coarse uh, TDC. Co this is counter-based, but the counter -based, simple counter-based DTC is very power-consuming. It is masked by uh, uh, PFD with Z zone. Only uh, it input signal, this signal, and this signal is outside of the Z zone. This uh, counter-based DTC will be work. Power consumption is at, uh, like less than 5 microwatt as I explained. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, the simulation result of the whole new uh, architecture. Black one is uh, for minus one megahertz disturbance. It can be easy, it can be uh, maintained by uh, subsampling operation. But uh, red one is uh, six megahertz uh, disturbance. In this case, the coarse uh, DTC and the out of dead zone detector can be detected here like this. And one more thing here, blue one, is uh, in this case, plus uh, FCW becomes plus one. In that case, the coarse uh, DTC and dead out of dead zone detector cannot be de cannot detect. But the uh, FLO, the duty cycle FLO can detect this uh, very special case and can also recover to the original position. Uh, actually, in this case, the uh, frequency and the phase have to be completely uh, moved to 11 megahertz or something. Uh, so uh, this is actually a very rare case uh, never happened in the real situation. The phase and frequency is completely, uh, the phase is completely the same, but the frequency becomes complete, uh, exactly uh, 10 megahertz or 11 megahertz become larger. So it is uh, never happened in the real situation. But uh, this uh, I mean, this is very rare case, but still this architecture can cover such kind of the very rare uh, the disturbance case. Mm. Okay, uh, okay, next I'd like to talk about some DCO design. For very low power DCO design, phase noise itself is not very important, but still the lowering the power consumption is required. You know, uh, uh, in, in terms of choice of uh, DCO, uh, we can apply some uh, NMOS type for lowering the, the phase noise or CMOS type and push prototype or 
uh, class C, uh, which can be applied for lowering the power consumption. For further lowering power consumption, uh, we need uh, higher tank impedance. Uh, it is uh, one of the key to reducing the power consumption. Or if we uh, uh, reducing the uh, current biasing, there are still uh, some amplitude is required both for maintaining good phase noise and also uh, the larger amplitude is also required for uh, driving next stage. So the, in this case, the uh, lowering the total power consumption of PLL, we try to in, uh, the increase the tank impedance of resonator. So in this case, we use this architecture. The transformer is sometimes used for lowering the uh, flicker noise corner um, by using the some uh, the common more and differential more defines, uh, but in this case the transformer is uh, applied for improve uh, the, the increasing the the equivalent tank uh, tank impedance. Okay, uh, tank impedance is usually uh, uh, okay. Tank impedance is uh, written like R tank here. In this case, the in case of uh, come on, CMOS type, push pro type, uh, visual case, the voltage amplitude can be uh, calculated by this. The whole of a pi and I bias in the R tank is multiplied like this. On the other hand, in this case, the, uh, I will skip the detail, but uh, in this case, the tank impedance can be multiplied by this, uh, the gain factor realized by transformer. So the roughly four point. Uh, three five times larger uh, tank impedance can be realized. Even with the, it means uh, even with the very low power uh, current consumption, larger uh, voltage amplitude can be realized in the ideal case. In actual case, the uh, several percent, uh, ten percent of improvement could be realized. And uh, the okay, so one more thing is this is uh, kind of current reducing type. We did it here. And the primary inductor is here in the cross coupling, and this current is completely used for the stacked part here. Something this start update. Oh, oh, okay, uh, okay. This is the actual uh, implementation result, and uh, the in this case, the in considering uh, the usually transformer have uh, reduced the quality factors compared with the uh, simple uh, spiral inductive. So the real uh, total difference in uh, tank impedance is 40% uh, like this. But still, we can improve the voltage amplitude even with the same power consumption like this. OK, next one, uh, I'd like to talk about some constant slope DTC for further reducing the power consumption of constant slope DTC. Okay, uh, this explaining about uh, the very uh, conventional type constant slope DTC. It's uh, starting from uh, here, uh, voltage coming, uh, starting from here, and once reset to the ground state, and uh, pre-charge here by uh, dark voltage here, then the constant slope is generated like this. But uh, after set that the comparison determining the output here, they're still charging up like this. This part consuming the redundant power consumption. So the uh, idea is just cutting this power, redundant power, just truncating the, this part. It, this simple idea can realize the 58% power reduction like this. Okay, uh, okay. architecture is almost the same, but they just uh, put this some uh, cutting of signal the, the just uh, the monitoring the output signal, and then it becomes uh, become one here. So this uh, constant slope generation part is turned off for reducing the power consumption. This is a very simple idea, and also uh, pre-charge uh, charge here. This node is not reset, and keeping the keep charge. And if uh, we completely uh, reset here. The still uh, pre-charging causes a larger power consumption. So this pre reducing the pre-charging uh, charge from the dark, the, this node is never reset. And one more thing is that uh, if uh, this node uh, becomes around the threshold voltage, it, uh, this inverter causes the larger 
a leakage current through the PMOS to NMOS. Uh, to cutting such a leakage current additional switch is placed here. This uh, very minor idea, but very powerful for reducing power consumption. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, it, uh, circuit operation is very easy. Just uh, here is some pre-charging step and uh, that generating a constant slope like this. And uh, just soon after the, uh, con the settling of here, output becomes zero to one. The, this constant slope generation is stopped and cut off the feedback here like this. On, on the other hand, this uh, S3 will be turned off to reducing the leakage current. And one more thing is that then usually the conventional DTC once reset to ground state, but in this case the, it is not uh, set and keeping the high voltage around here. Okay, the conventional one is become like this, but the proposed one is keeping the uh, around here and the charge is never uh, the reset to keep the charge around the, uh, this uh, capacity. Okay. Uh, it also again the implemented by 65 nanometer CMOS technology and the uh, free running visual phase noise like this. Uh, FOM itself is minus 185 dBc per health. It is not very good, uh, not uh, kind of state of state of art, but the power consumption becomes uh, around uh, 100 microwatt. Actually, one of my students uh, have a presentation tomorrow about the further reduced uh, visual. Uh, it realized that. Uh, uh, I forget, but 90 microwatt or uh, power consumption with uh, 10 dB better FOM uh, performance. Okay, uh, this is after lock. Uh, in this case, the total power consumption is 256 uh, microwatt with uh, FOM in, in this case mi minus 237 uh, dB could be realized. <coughs> okay, uh, this is fractions power, and uh, this is settling time. And uh, okay, oh, okay. This is uh, important information. This is explaining about uh, power difference. Uh, the uh, applying the applying the proposal uh, uh, proposal technique. For example, as I explained, uh, for feedback pass, multi modulus divider consumes very large power consumption. In this case, we apply uh, the switch sampling and the sub sampling switching architecture. It contribute 150 microwatt power reduction. And the DTC, actually we apply truncated architecture, but the contribution is very small. Actually last, e last, last year's design consumes uh, uh, like 100 microwatt or something, but just reducing it with the best, best effort of the same architecture. The truncation is the contribution is actually not very big, but still can reduce the power consumption like this. And also, uh, another part is that if we simply applying the subsampling architecture, always FLL, FLL is required to back up the uh, sudden disturbance. So simple uh, subsampling causes the very big penalty coming from the FLL. To further cutting this very huge power consumption we apply, uh, uh, duty cycle FLO. So actually this black one is never reported, but just to uh, try to minimize the power consumption using the uh, known architecture, past known architecture. Uh, even uh, our best effort, uh, it becomes 478 microwatt or something. But further applying the new architectures, new circuit technique, it can be cut around here like this. Okay, that's oh, good timing. Uh, this is uh, almost a final slide, and uh, uh, 265 microwatt could be realized. Uh, actually, uh, FOM was uh, slightly degraded as compared to the last one, but uh, uh, the at, uh, very, very low power as compared to the past time. This is actually the last one. The FOM is not good, but the power consumption is almost uh, uh, three to four times smaller. Okay, this is a comparison. Uh, this uh, last one I brought uh, uh, here. So uh, depending on, arch on architecture, actually this one is still uh, capable for the Bluetooth low energy transceiver. So it uh, didn't apply this one for the whole transceiver, but uh, further can reduce the uh, ultra low power 
uh, transceiver power consumption can be reduced by applying this arch uh, this circuit techniques. Okay, uh, finally we uh, applying subsampling and the sampling switching technique for reducing the power consumption, not for lowering the inbound phase noise. And the uh, transformer feedback type, uh, this you can reducing the uh, uh, power consumption. Actually, this uh, uh, type can report uh, one of the best lowest power consumption, uh, lowest power consumption for keeping the good uh, FOM performance. And the truncate operation have but mass very small improvement but still can re reduce the power consumption so finally we can reduce uh, reach the 256 microwatt for power consumption for the fractional NPL. okay that it okay uh, this is the result the, the, the conclusion uh, okay uh, now we have no need to purchasing the integer NPLL for FOM it is no meaning I think uh, maybe still the the fraction of spa reduction or supply sensitivity reduction or something. There, there are a lot of room, but the simple purchasing FOM is no meaning, I think. Also, for fractional and type, I think I can recommend the digital PLL for lowering the power consumption because of the charge pump and the, uh, some additional signal pass have to keep high power consumption for maintaining the low digital performance. On the other hand, the DTC, TDC, and the digital loop filter can be uh, design very low power. Just uh, 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 in terms of power efficiency, it is much better. And the LC is usually better uh, if we can uh, use the larger area for the inductor and transformer. And the subsampling can be good for reducing the power consumption. And simply, it, it can be almost uh, uh, compatible in terms of the uh, transfer function and loop operation. Uh, simply smoothly it can be switched uh, to the subsampling and back to the sampling mode there is no disturbance by switching okay then the, some uh, the, 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 uh, circuit detail circuit technique is explained uh, maybe uh, fast order DSM can be good for low power and some DTC technique. DTC can still have some room for improvement or lowering the power consumption and improving the linearity and uh, also I introduce uh, DCO technique and uh, duty cycling of FR operation or something. Okay, that's it. Thank you.